But I talked to at least two other single adults later who confirmed that was going on at that church. Now, things change. But we've lost our convictions in a lot of areas. (coughs) And so, last week we looked at what a man needs to know about a woman. Now, much of that content last week I got from a woman. You know, I got it from that Good Housekeeping uh, article a couple years ago and How to Train Your Husband. And uh, I thought she had some pretty good insights. I learned some wonderful answers that I'm going to use in counseling with some men. And, but today, this is what a woman needs to know about a man. Now, I don't want you to get mad at me. I'm reading from the Bible. I'm going uh, to a conference next week, so I'll be out of town. So if you have emails, send them to Glenn, you know. <laughs> but anyway... Let me just give you a a couple of verses from the Proverbs, and uh, this is what the Bible says. Because you're going to see, I'm not trying to say every woman is like this or you're like this, but it tells us is from a woman's perspective, this is something that doesn't really attract men or or, uh, get their attention the way you might want it. Proverbs 19 Verse 13. Proverbs 19, verse 13. A foolish son is the calamity of his father, and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. That means when a woman and a man aren't quite getting along the way they should. I apply this to a drip at the faucet. Have you ever had one that's not fixed? I, you know, you can be in bed at night. It can be in your kitchen downstairs and you can hear drip, drip. And then you hope it stopped and you know you, about the time you're about to get to sleep, you hear it again. It, it, it's not something overwhelming. Remember that. It's just that constant drip. Proverbs 21, verse 9 It is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop than with the brawling woman in a wild house, in a wide house. Then verse 19, it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. And I know, ladies, you've heard that quite a bit through your life, those particular verses. But I'm not trying to use them as a joke or whatever. I'm just, I want you to get the point here in just a minute. But then in 1 Peter chapter 3, <coughs> excuse me, likewise, you wise, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may be without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. Not saying anything wrong with makeup or jewelry or things like that. What it's basically saying here, that might attract a man on the front end. Men respond to sight. Women respond to touch. Men want admiration, thank you. And women want attention. These are just some basics in in the way that um, uh, God has has brought our make, has made us. But notice verse 4 again. But let it be the hidden man of the heart that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Now, I'm just saying that because the physical makeup in men and women is different. Anyone who has Unless you have the IQ of a water buffalo or less, you know that we're different. Thank God we're different. And that ought to get an amen from both men and women. But as we think about this today, you know, the Bible says over Proverbs 6, look to the ant in her ways. And, And I was thinking throughout the Bible, it tells us to look at animals sometimes to illustrate biblical truths says, look at the fowls of the air, how God takes care of them. And then it said that Jesus, after he came to a certain time in his ministry, he always shared things by means of a parable. 
So what I'm going to do today is not something that I've drawn specifically out of the Bible, but as I was thinking, Lord, how how can we kind of compare a man and a woman and bring out the differences to something that is very familiar to all of us? And I'm not the first one to do this. If you go on the internet and type in what I'm going to speak on, you'll find hundreds of articles, even books. But today, ladies, to kind of help you understand the differences in what you need to know about a man, I'm going to compare women to cats and men to dogs. How many of you have a cat? Just raise your hand. We've got a cat at our home, best cat I've ever had, about the only one. She came with us from Memphis, showed up at our church one day, beautiful gray with the tiger stripes. Man, her eyes are something else. I've never been a cat person, but she's a pretty good cat. Don't have any mice around our house. Matter of fact, don't have any chipmunks either. Uh, She takes care of them if they're around there. But then we have about an 80-pound chocolate Labrador. Hershey is a female. But Hershey's a dog. And there are things that dogs do that are different from the cat. And I really see a similarity, you know, even to men and the way dogs are as compared uh, to a woman. So now don't boo yet, ladies. Get through the whole thing as I share with you about this. First of all, as I looked at our cat and did some study of this, cats are finicky and picky. And they spend a good portion of their day grooming. Cats are moody, and they can be totally unpredictable. When you want to play, they want to be alone. When you want to be alone, they want to play. Cats purr. I'm not going to mimic a cat, but I mean, you know, that's a... I mean, Cherry, I, I, I have a thing. If we're, we're looking for at night, we, we keep the garage door open a little bit where she can get in. But guess what? Other cats get in, too, at times. No dogs have been able to get in, but you know, if I, we're looking for Cherry and want her to come in, you know, we're going, meow, meow. And she usually responds to something like that. But you know, she just purrs all the time and she doesn't really make a lot of noise. And so cats purr and only when our, they are in a fight do they get to screeching. Man, to protect her territory at our house, she has really torn up some male cats. But I've gone out there and boy, their backs are arched and they're ready to go at it. And we usually will run off the other cat. But that's the only time she really gets to screeching. And I tell you, it's not pleasant when you hear them do that. Now, cats like to taunt their prey, even toy with it. Uh, If there's a chipmunk around, it doesn't stay around very long in our house. And I've always thought chipmunks are kind of cute little animals, you know. But... I've come in at times and I thought there's a chipmunk there that's dead. It's right there where Cherry is and it's playing dead. If it thinks she's out of the way, boy, it gets up and goes again and she'll go after it and she'll grab it and she plays with it. Usually if we can, we try to free that little chipmunk uh, from her. But uh, that's just kind of interesting to me how she likes to toy with it. Then cats leave hairballs all over the place. Other than that, they like to keep things clean. They clean themselves and clean up after themselves and clean up after themselves when they use their little box. That's that's amazing to me how a cat will use that little box and you can't teach a dog to do that, you know. But uh, my brother-in-law, Greg Frizzell, he loves cats. Wanda's sister married his five cats when they got married. When we visited with them one time, there were five cats around that house. But man, they hid all the time. I could never see them when I came up, so they weren't like a dog. I'll guarantee you if there were five dogs in the house, it would have been different. But anyway, that's just kind of cats. They're just uh, different. And then cats don't beg you for things by jumping on you or wagging their tail. Well, I won't go there. But anyway, cats have penetrating eyes, and they seem to communicate you with, get this, their quiet manner, what they want you to do for them. Notice over there in 1 Peter chapter 3, the quiet spirit. I mean, I can tell you this with our cat. She can can pretty pretty much influence us just through her quiet ways if she needs something. And then another thing about cats. They're not, now, now don't take this wrong. They're not very trainable animals who will go fetch, and what I mean by this, if I go say, Cherry, go get the paper. She'll just look at me. If I throw a ball, 
She'll just look at me. You know, they, they just, they, they don't do things like that. And you won't see a pack of eight cats hooked up to a sled pulling a man or a woman through the snow. But here's the interesting thing. Cats have a way of getting done what they need you to do. Amen, man? If you... <laughs> Some of you are keeping awfully quiet today. <laughs> Now, we're going to make something spiritual out of this in a minute, so hang on. Now, how are men like dogs? Dogs tend to consume their prey at once. They like instant gratification. Dogs will please you and do just about whatever you ask them to do, but you've got to train them right. Number one, dogs like to be praised. Dogs like to be petted and told how good a dog they are. Isn't that the truth? You know, one I've noticed with Hershey... We don't let her in the house much, but when she would get in the house, uh, if Wanda was sitting in a chair, she, she'll go over there and kind of just sit on all fours, just right in front of Wanda and look at her, want Wanda to just pet her on the head. And if she doesn't do that, she plops one of those big old paws in her lap. But I mean, that's a dog. Now keep that in mind, ladies. Dogs like to be praised and petted. So... You throw a dog a bone and give a dog a dog biscuit or treat, and you can get them to roll over and do tricks. You can't do that with the cat. Dogs love to play. You hear that? Dogs love to play. Dogs will chase after a tennis ball you throw them over and over and over again. I've never actually sat out there at one time to see how many times Hershey would actually chase the tennis ball, but I've noticed she's about 11 years old now. That she will, uh, sometimes she won't even drop the ball. You have to take it out of her mouth now sometimes. But you'll throw it there. She'll go get it. And she turns around and just looks at you. She's getting old. (laughs) I think she gets out there and she wonders, I don't know if I want to run back or not. So that's another thing to keep in mind when dogs do get older. They're a little slower with some things. Now another thing, dogs love to compete. If there's more than one dog around and you throw the ball, they all run at it at full pace to try to get the the ball before the other dogs. Dogs are loyal. It doesn't take much to gain their affection. They'll love you forever if you rub their tummy. They love to eat. That's another thing to keep in mind. When you pour food in their bowl outside, they can hear you clear on the other side of the house with the air conditioning units humming next to where they're sleeping when they can just hear the sound of food going into their bowl. If they're in the house, you can open food in another room of the house. And if the food's for you, they'll come in there and they'll want some of your food, even if they just got fed a few minutes earlier. Dogs are great at begging. They will paw on you and nudge you and jump on you just to get you to pet them or praise them or play with them. But dogs, again, are not the tidiest creatures or cleanest creatures. They do tend to leave their toys everywhere, and dogs put their noses and mouths on everything and then want to come up and lift you in the face. Brandon and Megan have this little miniature dachshund, Tot. She's about two years old now. I finally figured out something the other night, and it's kind of, I don't know what to think about it. But when she's at our house, she'll go over to her bowl and get some dog food. She'll come over, jump in my lap, and will lick me in the face. I think there's something, maybe I give her salt or something, I don't know, but it's just, I don't let her do it anymore, but I thought, that is really interesting to me. You know, she'll get her a piece or two of food and then come over there and I guess want a little bit of, uh, I must have a sweet taste about me or something. But anyway, (laughs) now ladies are men like dogs. Well, here's something to think about. They can be your best friends. If you can overlook some of the way dogs are because they're dogs. When I, you know, when we had Brandon, Wanda and her sister were only 10 months apart. And then their younger brother came five or six years later. And, you know, with two older sisters, he didn't really get to be a boy the way a boy would be if he had two older brothers. And the girls kind of, you know, Tim's okay, but I'm just saying... When you grow up in a home with all boys, you kind of understand this. But our first, Brandon's first five years, Wanda thought he was demon-possessed. And uh, she would ask me, 
She would come in and be so, tell me something when I get on and he did. She, she says, why does he do that? I said, because he's a boy. That's all, you know, that's just the way it is. And it's just the same way with dogs sometimes. Dogs are peculiar. But most of the time they're pretty good and you can train them. You won't find anything more loyal or likable or lovable than a dog. Now, like dogs can be trained to work such as being sled dogs, men will work. Sometimes men will work in jobs they don't even like. But if it's enough to make a living, provide for their family, and again, you let your husband, there are just some certain things you do for him, he'll work at a job like that year after year, never complain about it and do it over and over again. Just, uh, you know, because he feels he needs to work and take care of his family. Now, how does a woman please a man? Well, think about it this way. Feed them. Play with them and praise them and let them sleep. Then do it over again. Feed them. And when you have more time to play with them, play with them more than usual. Then praise them and let them sleep. I'm telling you, that's the key to keeping a man happy. It's not that complicated. Well, I hope you enjoyed the first half of the sermon on what a woman needs to know about a man. As I've used uh, cats to illustrate women, and I'll be using dogs uh, to illustrate men. But I want you to know, ladies, uh, we men are not that complicated. And we'll get more into it in the next sermon, but really there are about three or four things that if you learn to do those three or four things, you'll pretty much keep your husband happy. And that's the purpose of this series on marriage God's way. It's not only to help a couple who've decided to get married to know as much about each other as they can prior to marriage, but it's also to help us who've been married for 27 years, as in my case, that we can have another 27 great years of marriage and how we can better understand each other as a husband and a wife. 50% of marriages today end in divorce. And that was really disturbing to me and it's bothered me for a long time. So I put together these sermons on marriage God's way to do what I can to help people know ahead of time that they're marrying the right person and then to help people to remain in their marriage to the same person as long as they both shall live. Well, I think as we all seek to do the will of God, these are great days to be alive. They're difficult times, but the greatest opportunities to win souls to Christ are right now. And I just want to encourage you to be able to testify as I say and close this program every week. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.